Scott Martin is with us. So is John Layfield and Liz McDonald and Ashley Webster right here on the set in New York. Start with the final reading of economic growth between April and, uh, what would it be, June. That's the yes. second quarter. Yeah, right. 4.2%. John, I call that solid. Is that pretty good news for the market? Yeah, I'm not sure solid's even good enough. I, I think it's a fantastic number, and it's all based on uh, economic fundamentals of this economy. That's doing fantastic. There was a little front loading in that number, but uh, you also had some inventory numbers that were low, so inventory should be rebuilt, which portends to a good GDP number in the next quarter. Okay. Now, the Federal Reserve raised rates for the third time this year. Rates now at the highest level since the bankruptcy of Lehman all those years ago. So come on in, Scott Martin, and you tell me, these rate hikes, which we are going to see in the future, there's more to come, will that interrupt the economy's expansion? No, and I think the Fed is doing the right thing. I know the president's not so much a fan of these higher interest rates, Stuart, but I'll tell you what, the Fed's got the door open now to do more interest rate hiking to get, as you pointed out, I mean, my goodness, all the way back to the Lehman bankruptcy. <laughs> Are we kidding ourselves? Getting interest rates back to just normal, my friends, mm -hmm. and following the economy, following the economic data, it's not going to choke off growth. It's actually going to make things good. feel more normal, which is a good thing. That's exactly right, Scott Martin. And you know what? The president should take this as a compliment because it shows that the Fed is recognizing how strong the economy are, is. And we no need to, we can stand on our own two feet now because this economy and the data that's coming along is strong enough to support it. Fair point. I'm going to go back one more time to the presidential press conference because it was so good. <laughs> uh, he had a lot to say about trade. And I'm going to wrap up what he had to say. Number one, Japan agrees to bilateral talks. Got that. The administration not happy with Mexico. Got that. A deal could be coming soon with Mexico. But Canada, very different story. President Trump told our own Susan Lee that Trudeau's tariffs are too high and he doesn't seem to want to move. That's not having any impact on the stock market this morning, but are, they are developments on trade. Then we have Ford Motor Company's chief saying that metals, the tariffs on metal, have cost that company, Ford, a billion dollars mm. already. Walmart, J.C. Penney, Procter & Gamble, they're all saying the same thing, prices up because of tariffs. Scott, should we be taking, is this a, a warning about the future of the economy? Yeah, um, if it lasts, Stuart, if the tariff talks escalate, yeah, this is a concern because here's the thing that's funny. I mean, yes, I get it. This is impacting Ford and some of the other companies you mentioned. I mean, certainly, if you look at the Ford stock price, yeah, it's probably in there, too. But what eventually happens is it hits the consumer. The, yeah. the, these companies that start losing money eventually start hitting the consumer with higher prices. That's where we don't want this to go. Yeah, Scott's right. Walmart sent a letter to the president and the U.S. Trade Representative Lighthizer on dozens of products they yeah. are seeing that could see their prices rise, everything from dog food to Christmas lights. So, you know, we know that the consumer spending component of this read on GDP, really powerful, 3.8% right. pop up right. in consumer spending as consumer confidence is at an 18-year high. You got but, it. To get back to the auto issue, if the tariffs stand as they are, the extra cost per new vehicle, $1,800 to $5,700 more per vehicle. Is that just Ford? No, that's across the across board. The board. Yeah, across yes. the board. Yes, vehicles made in America. Yep. Okay, got that's it. All, that's significant. All right, we've lost much of the early rally. It was up about 50 points at one stage. Now we're up five, just shy of 26,400. Conagra, their sales fell short, hurt by lower demand for their products from restaurants, food service outlooks. The stock is down 5%. Big drop for a company of that size. Sales again falling short at McCormack. The Spice people, they're down 3.5%. Look at Rite Aid. They lost money, but they had higher sales. Do the balancing thing here. How's that work out for investors? A one cent loss. Hmm. Bed Bath & Beyond, my goodness me, taking it on the chin today. Not a very rosy outlook, and they've got intense competition from the Walmarts and the Amazons of this world. So, Scott Martin, uh, what do you make of Bed Bath & Beyond? Oh, yikes. What a disaster. Where's Will Ferrell when you need him? You know, I thought a lot of people on the weekends were going to Home Depot for like flooring, wallpaper, and then maybe Bed Bath & Beyond no. if there was enough time. That's an old school movie reference. Um, here's the thing. You know, they are feeling a lot of competition, Stuart, but these days retail, especially these very specialty retail like Bed Bath & Beyond, just aren't drawing people in. Even at the height of the retail craze, if you like, I, I just hated the way those stores were laid out. Narrow aisles with products piled high 
high to yeah. the ceiling. It was never very easy to, to maneuver at the best of times. Now you can just click and have it to the right. You it's feel like you, you, you yeah. feel claustrophobic, like you're going yes. to get an asthma attack in a yes. Bath and Beyond store. <laughs> and plus, the prices are pretty high there. Well, don't you get those 20% off blue coupons? Everybody gets them, well, yeah, well, including I... moi. <laughs> but it brings yeah. basically enough. <laughs> uh, uh, Amazon store of the day. Here we go. Opening a new store in New York's Soho neighborhood that sells items from its website rated four stars or above. Mm. Give the people what they want. Is that right, John? Absolutely. Look, I own Amazon for this exact reason. The reason I don't own something like Bed Bath & Beyond, I don't want anybody that has to compete with Amazon. Retail used to be an inexact science. You didn't know what you needed to group together. You didn't know what you need to put where in the store. It's now an exact science. So to compete with Amazon, you've got to have this massive data. Walmart can do that. Home Depot can do that. Most of these stores can't. All right. Amazon this morning close to $2,000 a share again. Mm. Uh, remember that forecast that it's going to $3,000 within two years from a leading investment firm yesterday. Let's see about that. McDonald's going healthy with its burger menu. The seven classic McDonald's burgers sold stateside are now free from artificial preservatives, flavors, and colors. They're in an industry. They are the industry leader, I think you'd say. I guess uh, other big chains will have to follow that. Well, it turns out the yeah. American cheese is full of artificial preservatives. I'm absolutely sh shocked at that. The Big Mac sauce, same problem. Even buns. the buns have artificial preservatives. <laughs> You know, I think they're just putting in place what people want, and I think it's a smart move. And they say they're not going to pass on any extra costs because the costs to do this are minimal. Okay. Yeah. This is my favorite story of the day. What <laughs> they are not going all natural with, though, are Egg McMuffins, the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits, and French fries will still have preservatives in them. You know they, what makes they French... They taste great. You know why? Because they <laughs> have goodness. a natural... They have a beef, a beef flavoring to the French fries. That's the they secret do? ingredients, yeah. yes. Really? They do? Yes, they do. How do you know that? Because I just looked it up. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>